Guys, got a much longer video today than I normally do. This video is roughly 12 or 30 minutes long, but it's a live interview with Pierre Polyev, and we go through almost everything that Trudeau's done now and Freeland and what what um, Polyev would do in the same situation. So we're going to talk about the banks, we're going to talk about India, we're going to talk about Israel, and we're going to talk about the way that Canada is just breaking down and being segregated and, and split by Trudeau. So get yourself a brew, <laughs> get yourself a cup of tea, sit down and uh, I'll try and put chapters on this if you if I can when I get when I get home. But yeah, this is this is a long one, but it should be a really good one. Hope you enjoy it guys. Guys, you won't believe this. The RBC want to take over HSBC Bank and we want to buy them out. They're going to have the monopoly on, on mortgages. So they'll just be able to charge exactly what they want. This is not good, not good for housing and for people buying houses. Not good at all. We've got Polyev on the, on the radio, and he's going to explain why this is bad for Canadians and bad for Canada and really bad for housing. He needs to convince Freeland not to let this go through. Not that she knows anything about financing anyway. So Pierre, how would you handle this? How how would you stop it? And how would you control the narrative on this one? So the first question is how would I stop it? Uh, I would have my finance minister simply block the deal. Uh, so for background for your listeners, RBC Canada's biggest bank by both market value and mortgage book wants to buy the seventh largest bank, HSBC, that would uh, give uh, uh, a royal control over 800,000 more customers and 33 billion more loans. Um, in Toronto and Vancouver, HSBC has 5 and 10% respectively of the market share, which means that they are fighting for customers in the two biggest mortgage markets in the country. And what does that mean? It means that they, they compete. They inch down the mortgage rates. I, I saw back in August, HSBC was about a half a percentage point lower than RBC, and that's what competition does. You try to bring your price down just a little bit to bring the customer in the door. Competition means better prices and products. But we have massive concentration in our banking sector. The six biggest banks control almost 90% of all mortgages in Canada. And this would take out one potential uh, upstart competitor who could, who if, if, if it stays in the market and doesn't get bought, could, could fight for more market share by offering better products and services. And now more than ever, we need that because after eight years of Trudeau, housing costs have doubled, mortgage rates are rising faster than at any time in history. And of course, much of that is Justin Trudeau's deficits driving up borrowing costs and inflation, but on top of that, you have so little competition that the banks can drive up their uh, their um, profit shares at the expense of borrowers. Yesterday, the Competition Bureau published a report saying that today we have less competition in the Canadian economy than we did 20 years ago, that there's growing concentration among a smaller group of oligopolies who are earning bigger profits, not because they're offering awesome products or services, but because Canadians can't go anywhere else. They have no other choices. So I would block these mergers, particularly these big federally regulated sectors like banking, telecom, rail. Uh, there should be no uh, airlines. There should be no more mergers. There is very little competition in those sectors already. Trudeau has let about eight major mergers go ahead, and that's one of the reasons why we have such high prices and such an uncompetitive economy today. Great answer. A long answer. Great. I hope everyone's still here after that long answer. Anyway, something else that people want to ask you, uh, Pierre, is what would you do regarding the Israel uh, war that's going on? How would you... How would you handle what's going on at the moment? Well, I would put a major focus on securing Canada. We live in an increasingly dangerous world, uh, whether it's uh, the Russia-Ukraine conflict, the uh, uh, war between Hamas and Israel in the Middle East, and then, of course, the growing fat threats in East Asia. Uh, of course, we're not proposing that Canada become militarily involved in any of these things, but 
they all remind us that this is a dangerous world where surprises happen. And that means we need to rebuild rather than cut down our military. We need to have better border security. And we need uh, a, uh, a we need to be on a, on a, a state of readiness that, that we have lacked over the last several years, because you never know what, what can come knocking on our door. And and my purpose, you know, when it comes to foreign policy, will be Canada first. Stand up for our country, keep our people safe, and then that's what I will be doing when I'm prime minister. So on top of that, then we're having so many hate protests and demonstrations and. And, and other things happening here on our shores in Canada. How, how would you deal with that? Especially the hate that's going around and the, the, the anti this and anti that and the division between Canadians in Canada. What I would say is this. One, everybody's entitled to protest. People are entitled to hold rallies and, and even if they disagree with me, However, what I would say is don't blame your Jewish or Muslim neighbor for something you don't like about what's going on in the Middle East. You might disagree with a decision of the Israeli government. That, that is your right, but that doesn't mean you blame your local synagogue uh, for that. Secondly, you might be outraged, as we all should be, by the horrors of the sadistic terrorist death call Hamas. However, you don't blame uh, your Muslim neighbor here in Canada for that. They didn't do the, they didn't do those deeds. So let's remember we are all Canadian. We don't want to import foreign conflicts in, onto Canadian soil. We must be united. Whether your name is Martin or Mohammed, Smith, Singh, or uh, Steinberg, uh, you are a Canadian, a Canadian first, and let's stay united. So if you talk to Singh or Trudeau about this or any of the liberal or what do we call it, the Lib MDP, about any of this? Because, you know, when you get voted to be Prime Minister, it's going to be your problem and your issue to try and put all this destruction back together again. It will. And, and it's, it's tough. I mean, look, uh, Trudeau has taken every opportunity to divide Canadians. He did that during the pandemic. He, he does it on race, on gender. Recently, he was attacking parents who are uh, calling them hateful because they express concerns about uh, gender issues in schools. Um, he's always looking for ways to wedge and divide Canadians and turn them against each other. I pray that he will not do that with the Middle East conflict, though I'm sure he's tempted to distract from the cost of living and crime crises that he's caused. So I would tell the Prime Minister, don't divide our people, unite us all, we're all Canadian. Just wondering, have you ever talked to Trudeau about this? I have been at a number of events where he has been present. I haven't had a chance to talk to him about this in particular. There's many threats going around the world at the moment, whether it's India, whether it's China, whether it's the Ukraine-Russian thing, or whether it's the Israeli-Hamas thing. What do you think is the biggest threat to Canada at the moment? Look, all of the above. Yesterday we saw reports of uh, missiles uh, landing near uh, U.S. installations in the Middle East. Uh, so uh, we don't know what could trigger. Remember, <laughs> the First World War was triggered when a, a, a little known Archduke was assassinated uh, in the Balkans, and all of a sudden the whole world was in a war. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just saying we have to be ready and we have to expect the unexpected. We have, our country is in a position of unprecedented weakness. Our military is falling apart. The Prime Minister is cutting another billion dollars out of it. We have the most indebted households in the, in the G7. Our, our, our country's national debt has now doubled, so our financial resources to protect ourselves are, are depleted. I, I worry the Prime Minister has brought us to the brink before any major conflict like this. So my view is we need to strengthen our economy and our national defenses so that we can prepare for the unexpected. Let's just move swiftly now onto the India issue. And there's a lot of allegations going around with India. India are really pushing against Canada. But what what would you do? What would you do in this? If you were in Trudeau's place now, what would you do about India? How would you solve the India issue and and try and calm the Indian population of Canada? Well, the first thing I would do if I were the Prime Minister and I had knowledge uh, of who committed a murder, I would call the police. 
Um, mm. the, the, this whole conflict, uh, this whole public uh, event happened when the Prime Minister uh, accused India of potentially being linked to a the murder of a Canadian citizen. If he knows who pulled the trigger, he should call the RCMP and let them know so that they can arrest the, the killer, the actual per, uh, perpetrator uh, who had the gun in their hand. And it's now been 100 days roughly since this uh, gentleman was murdered, Mr. Najjar, and nobody's been arrested. Um, secondly, we have to have professional relationships with uh, all our democratic allies. We, well, I believe we have to have a professional relationship with India. It's the biggest democracy in the world, the second most populous nation on earth, uh, massive strategic importance in the, the global conflicts before us, an enormous customer for our lentils, our potash, our uranium, our potentially our natural gas, if we could ever get it out of the ground. So we need professional relationships. Um, and we need answers and clarity on what actually happened so that we can protect our people and our interests. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you stayed to the end. That was a longer video than we normally make on here, but let's just, I just wanted to put it all in one video. Um, yeah, that's exactly what a decent common sense prime minister would do at the moment. Not the one we've got now. We're in the wrong place with the wrong prime, prime minister. <laughs> Till next time.